Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're not going to make too many new friends by playing a Tamyo, Inquisitive Student as our commander. This one man 3 is flying. Whenever it attacks, we investigate, so we get to make a clue token. And then whenever we draw our third card in a turn, we can exile Tamyo and transform it into the Seasoned Scholar, which can immediately plus two, saying opposing creatures will get a minus one power when they attack us next turn. Then we can use the minus three to maybe return a card from our graveyard. And then at the minus seven, which is the the eventual goal of the deck, we get to draw cards equal to half the number of cards in our library, round it up, and we have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. So the goal of the deck, as we said, is to ultimate Tamyo, and it doesn't take us too many turns to get there. We can already ultimate Tamyo around turn 4, turn 5 with a good draw, since we have plenty of cheap card draw effects to turn Tamyo into the Planeswalker, and then with a proliferate effect, getting Tamyo one extra loyalty can already speed up the ultimate by a turn, since we can plus 2 twice, then proliferate, and then immediately minus 7. And then I've split up the deck into a few different categories to help with the breakdown, although there's really only four categories. The first one are card draw effects. These are also ways to help transform Tamiyo. Then we've got counter spells, since a deck where we can play our commander on turn one and then keep up mana for the rest of the game basically means that counter spells will be incredibly effective. And then we've got our ramp effect, ways to maybe draw cards while playing an extra land are also pretty useful. And then finally we've got some additional interaction for maybe be permanence that slipped through the cracks and that we couldn't counter. Still nice to have a few ways to answer them. Ways to shrink opposing creatures into 1-1s one are also quite good, since Tamiya's plus ability means that they won't deal any damage to us, so that's also quite synergistic. And then the miscellaneous section has some more fun cards. So yeah, that's the rough breakdown. Now for the deep dive, I'm going to go over this pretty quickly, since again, the deck is pretty self-explanatory. At zero mana, there's Mishra's Bauble, which can be another free card draw effect to make it easier to transform Tamyo. Also plays well with our fetch lanes. Brainstorm, probably the best card alongside Tamyo, as we can immediately transform it for just one mana. And once again, also plays well with our fetch lanes, as we can shuffle away unwanted cards. Then we've got Consider and Opt, which are pretty similar. Charter Course can draw two, so it can also transform Tamyo on turn two since we get one card from our draw step, two more from Charter Course, and very similar is a Winged Words, which we can cast for two mana if we control a flying creature, so that's another way of transforming Tamiyo on turn two. Then a Contentious Plan, one of the few ways we have of proliferating to speed up the Tamiyo ultimate. The Deuce can be cast at instant speed, also makes a clue token, can maybe synergize with our improvised cards as well. And Augury, another way to proliferate, even though it doesn't technically draw. Brain Surge, similar to Brainstorm, just a bit more expensive, gets to see more cards, but is also an instant speed way of transforming Tamiyo. So let's say you want to keep up a counter spell, you pass a turn, the opponent tries to remove Tamiyo with a removal spell, then you can still turn Tamiyo into a Planeswalker by drawing three or more cards at instant speed, and then even though we don't get to activate the Planeswalker, it's still maybe a way to save Tamiyo from that removal spell. Then Compulsive Research can draw three at sorcery speed, Thirst can draw three at instant speed, and with both we'll have to discard. Then there's Tethered's Gambit, which can also be a way of proliferating and drawing two cards, can easily pay two life to the Phyrexian mana. And then Lorien Revealed can be Island Cycled, also pretty synergistic with Mystic Sanctuary, which does have the Island type, so that can help get instants and sorceries back from our graveyard on the top of our deck if we need them. But uh, of course, just casting it for five mana is also fine. And then Reverse Engineer with Improvise can just tap three clue tokens to cast it for double blue and draw three, so that's also quite nice. And then we've got two Delve spells, since we're quickly filling the graveyard with all our instants and sorceries and fetch lands, so Treasure Cruise and Dig Through Time are both perfect additions. Then our counter spells include a Spell Pierce, which is quite flexible, countering any non-creature spell unless they pay two. Three steps ahead is basically a three mana counter spell with additional upside. Wash away, kind of the default answer to opposing commanders. Sensor can also be cycled to draw, so it's quite flexible there as well to transform Tamiyo. We've got Disdainful Stroke, Glorious Gale for creatures with a bit of upside. We've got Memory Lapse, Negate for non-creature spells. Tails End also good against commanders. And then we've got Counterspell and the Busted Mana Drain, the best Counterspell in Magic, pretty much. And then a Disruption Protocol can easily tap a clue to help pay for it. And then Exclude Counter Creature Draw Card. Metallic Rebuke with Improvise can once again tap our clue tokens to help cast it. 
Then we've got Disallow with the added flexibility of maybe countering activated or triggered abilities as well. Can be a good way of maybe stopping a Planeswalker ultimate, which is always fun. Wizard's Retort can be cast for double blue if we control Taimyo, which is a wizard. Then there's a Charm, which is also quite flexible. Dismiss can counter and draw, and Rewind can counter and untap up to four lanes to maybe still use your mana afterwards. And then our ramp effects include Mox Amber, Baral gives us a discount to all our instants and sorceries and also synergizes with our counter spells as we now get to draw and discard. And then we've got a category of cards here that are basically draw a card, play an extra land, Explorer, Grow Spiral, Planar Genesis is a slightly different take on it. And then we have Uro, which we can also escape, and this will be one of our primary win conditions if our opponent doesn't just concede to the Time Your Ultimate. Then we also have Kellen, which can also be quite synergistic with our clue tokens, as we now don't need to pay two mana to sacrifice them. Instead, Kellen can attack, destroy a clue, and we get to draw a card. And there's also a way to ramp early on. And then we've got Eureka Moments, which can draw two, also good at transforming Tamio, and we can put a land from our hand onto the battlefield. Then there's Arcane Signet, Sapphire Medallion, since we have so many blue spells in the deck is also great. And then a two very important enchantments, Wilderness Reclamation, we're probably familiar with, get to untap our land so we can maybe draw cards in our turn and still keep up counters in the opponent's turn. And then now we also have the Shadow of the Second Sun, which doesn't read similarly to Wilderness Reclamation, but in practice it basically does the same, we get to untap our lands once again, and then we also get to draw an extra card on top of that, so that's also very powerful. And then our interaction has a cheap bound spell with Fading Hope. And then a Witness Protection can turn opposing creatures into 1-1s, one make them lose all abilities. So that's a perfect answer, as time you can then shrink those down. And then Eaten by Pranas and Utter Insignificance, we can also play at instant speed. So these also play well with our counters. And then we've got both Cyclonic Rift and a Rivers Rebuke to bounce all the opponent's stuff back. And then Subtlety we can also maybe evoke by pitching a blue card, so we can basically play it for free to bounce an opposing creature spell back that's on the stack essentially. So it's also quite flexible, could also maybe count it as a counter spell. And then our miscellaneous section has Malcolm as an extra flash creature that can maybe help play spells for free. Also plays well with Proliferate, as we can proliferate Malcolm's counters to more easily start casting spells for free. And then a Snapcaster Mage to rebuy our instants and sorceries is great, and Time Warp to take an extra turn. And importantly, it doesn't exile itself, so we can also maybe get it back from the graveyard if we decide to use Time Use minus 3 ability. But for the most part, we're just going to keep plussing and then setting up the minus 7 instead. And then a mana base has plenty of fetch lanes, despite being two colors. We do want access to a little bit of green, but we still need lots of double, sometimes triple blue, so most of our basics are islands. We've got two forests and then lots of dual lanes for fixing, and then plenty of fetch lanes as well. And as we noted, we can also sometimes get Mystic Sanctuary as an island to get a spell back from our graveyard. And then the channel lanes offer a bit more interaction. And then Breeding Pool and Hatch Maze are more lanes we can fetch up with most of our fetch lanes. Hatch Maze letting us surveil one while entering tapped can also help fill the graveyard or give us a bit more card selection. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play facing Hadisa the Restless, a junt deck which typically has a lot of disruption. Our hand doesn't have the best way of protecting Tami, although never mind, I guess we do have a Wizard's Retort, which I can keep up turn two. So unless they have a one mana removal spell, we can maybe ride this Tamiyo to victory. It's gonna be a Dragon's Rage Channeler, also quite good. And then now we have a lands that can all enter untapped, basically. And there's the first answer to Tamio, and yeah, Abrupt Decay is uncounterable. So, Tamio down, opponent found the perfect answer. Don't see a ton of Abrupt Decay in Brawl, but uh, very effective here. So we'll uh, just draw with a clue. And then I could already redeploy Tamio here for three mana, but it's gonna be without any sort of protection. So, that's more questionable. So might have to keep up counter spells and then wait until we have five mana to play Tamiyo with Retort backup. Hmm. 
and then in the meantime the channeler is going to go off. Liliana is worth countering since that can pressure our hand and we're very bad at attacking planeswalkers. So I'll get uh, breeding pool seems fine. Now interestingly we could have maybe waited for Liliana to ultimate and then counter the trigger with a disallow. But I uh, don't want them to shred my hand apart. Wash away will come in handy. So I still need to wait to deploy Tamiya here to do it safely. Now I can rewind still cast Eureka moments. Halfling will make future creatures uncountable if they're legendary. Yeah, I guess I'll fight over it. Could also save the Eureka moment until after we play Tamiyo, but I have to imagine we'll find more card draw effects. So yeah, opponent with a Halfling and the Abrupt Decay, multiple cards that are effective against blue decks. Eventually the Channeler is going to start hitting pretty hard. So Taimyo's plus ability is not going to be able to keep it in check. So we do need to find a solution to that as well. And then I think I'll fetch now for a Surveil Land. And look for some card draw effects. And a Shadow, that sort of counts. Cannot cast it right now. So let's see. If I play the Medallion, time is 2 mana. But then I still can't keep up Wizard's Retort. Could keep up Wash Away, but our opponent could also have a Removal Spell end of turn. So I don't think it's a turn for Tamiyo yet. Instead we can just develop our mana. And then next turn set up our Shadow. Alright, opponent's gonna hit one of our artifacts with Poseju. That's fine, still get a land in return. Although now Channeler does get to two extra power. And a Jet Collector is next. So we would be able to make a Mox Jet. And then can reanimate creatures from the graveyard. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. So let us maybe Wizard's Retort. Wash away a cheaper answer to the commander. And Winged Ward's a way to maybe transform Tamiyo instantly. Although that's gonna leave me tapped out, so... Instead we can play the Shadow. Enchanting ourselves. And then get an extra untap step and draw step. So it's very similar to Wilder's Reclamation, but we also get an extra draw step out of it. And Disa we can counter. Let's maybe use Disdainful Stroke, which is more conditional in nature. Alright, so we can redeploy Tamiyo. Play the uh, Winged Words as well to immediately transform it. I've read nearly the entire library. And so this is a nice answer to the channeler. This is not just a battle of arms, but of I, I am not defenseless. And then I guess we'll have a look at the opponent's next draw. Just a land. Okay. So we get to untap. And uh, yeah, that's a bit of a land pocket here. So hopefully we'll find some card draw effects soon. 
6. Says as long as it's your turn, and online permanence in graveyard have a retrace. Yeah, that's worth countering. But uh, now we're pretty vulnerable if they have anything else left. And a bitter triumph on Tamiyo. Not the end of the world. Another land to draw. Okay. So your opponent can resolve their commander most likely. And there's not much I can do about it. As we draw another land. Drawing two cards per turn is still nice. But drawing non-land cards would be even better. Alright, Augury. So time you attacks. So we at least get a clue. Even though that means they can uh, start making Tarmogoyfs. Let's draw. Find three steps ahead, okay. So now we can fully spree three steps ahead. If we want to, to transform Tamiyo as well. And then hopefully find something useful. Can copy my signets. And a Wilderness Reclamation could be fun. Now if I use Augury, I can minus Tamiyo as well to get something back out of the graveyard. But I guess it's just counter spells. Maybe get a three steps ahead, but that's not going to stop Disa from hitting us. So... I guess we'll start here regardless and find Cyclonic Rifts, okay. That could work. And then time you can just plus for now. As we'll be able to overload Cyclonic Rift in the opponent's turn and Snapcaster Mage was excellent too. Hope they tap out for some creature, first main. They could even give it haste with the Arena of Glory. And then they won't be able to redeploy as much after the Cyclonic Rift. So it took a while to get going here, but now it feels like we can take control over the game. Shieldreds. That does make me sacrifice a Planeswalker as well. Although I can just play Snapcaster Mage to sacrifice that instead. So yeah, what's the plan here? Snapcaster... Maybe on... I mean, I may as well counter Shieldreds at that point. Can go Snapcaster, Rewind, and then still have Cyclonic Rifts. Or I could go three steps ahead to counter. Yeah, either way, Snapcaster is happening. And then... Yeah, I guess we'll get three steps ahead here. Counter token can also copy Snapcaster Mage. And discard a card. And then Snapcaster, I guess, wouldn't be able to get anything else back. Since we're a little short on mana. Alright, there were maybe better sequences available here. But this seemed fun. And then we can just jump with the token, and then Cyclonic Rift. But now we also have Odawara, so I feel pretty safe. Use your words. Can play the Reclamation, although it's a little bit redundant here. Alright, pass the turn. And then get an extra untap. And our opponent sees the writing on the wall, next turn ultimate Tamiyo, we'll draw half of our deck and then we should be able to figure out a way to win. On to the next one. 
Are you attending MagicCon Amsterdam this weekend? Then make sure to come say hi during the Creator Meet and Greet on Saturday and you'll walk away with one of my tokens while supplies last. Okay, we're on the draw facing Nadu, the Terror of the Brawl queue. And uh, yeah, we've got a decent hand, Tails and a cheap counterspell. So hopefully they can make Nadu uncounterable, whether it be Cavern of Souls or Delighted Halfling. Those are the types of cards that can beat Tamyo, even if we have a good draw. Safekeeper is acceptable. We'll mostly be fighting on the stack and not on the battlefield. So I'll go with Islands, keep Polluted Delta to maybe fetch a Surveil Land. And then Mana Drain was excellent too. More cheap counter spells. Building up our artifact count for Reverse Engineer. Can augury end of turn if we don't need to do anything else, or we can sack our clue. Although given Reverse Engineer, I might prefer casting the augury, even though holding augury can be a way of proliferating our Planeswalker to speed up the ultimate. So there's a few considerations. So ideally, they just tap out for Nadu, and then we don't have to cast any of our cantrips. Opponents, yeah, with Wash Away. That's why a one mana commander is so powerful, it can often sneak underneath all those counter spells. And do we see Nadu? Or are they gonna wait? Nope, there's Nadu. And if I mana drain, next turn I get three additional mana, which I can already put to use. So I don't mind this. And yeah, that's good enough for a concession. Our opponent knows what's going to happen. We're just going to pull further and further ahead while always having a counterspell for Nadu available. And without Nadu, the deck's not all that scary. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Harashmi. And what do we think of our hand? Turn one time, yo, turn to explore. With Bobble, we could draw two cards in one turn. And then maybe sack a clue token. So, yeah, that could be an early transformation here. Don't need to show them the bobble yet. Can also bobble myself and then decide whether or not to fetch. And Uro the draw. We could still explore now. Find a consider, that's another cheap cantrip. Can attack. And then I think the plan is Sag Bobble in the opponent's turn, so it'll draw in my turn. And our opponent's just ramping, that's fine. And I can still Bobble myself here to decide whether or not I want to shuffle. Happy to keep a land on top. Lorien Revealed is sort of a land, but I need to cycle it first. So it's not quite as good as just a uh, regular land. And then Hatch Maze lets us surveil. And a Tessert's Gambit could be fun once we actually transform Taimyo. To proliferate and speed up the ultimate by a turn. Although if I put it in the graveyard there's still maybe a chance Snapcaster can get it back. And I would really like a land instead. I think we look for extra mana. Time Warp's always powerful, and a Tail's End. So I'll start with Consider. And keep a Fabled Passage. And then I guess, uh, yeah, we get to transform Time Yo already. So probably should have attacked first to get an extra clue. But now we get to keep up Disallow to counter their next play. And we'll counter Rashmi. Could also do so with Tail's End, actually. But I prefer using the more expensive counter spell. Since they're likely going to present more targets for Tail's End. And now a Sanctum Weaver, making even more mana. So we can keep plussing. Time warp. 
And then now we can actually go Snapcaster, Tazard's Gambit. To proliferate. And immediately Ultimate Tamiyo. Alright, and then hopefully this is good enough to figure out a way to win the game. Could have actually left Tamiyo in my graveyard to make it easier to escape Uro. And then can still play a land for my turn, but good luck navigating this interface. Uh, I see a Dream Root Cascade, but yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Gitrog, and we've got an acceptable hand. Do need to hit some more land drops. But at least we should have an expensive commander covered with our counter spells. Opponent does seem to have an answer here, Virtue Persistence. Okay, so it's gonna take us a while to redeploy. But we've got some other decent options available. Um, probably start with Baral, could also use Kellen's Adventure, and then next turn Baral keep up some other instance. Sure. And then I can fetch a Hedge Maze to look for more lanes. Maybe fill the graveyard for Uro's escape, which would have been a reason to maybe keep Time you in the graveyard to escape it later. And now a Shakedown Heavy, yeah, that's a high-powered creature to help saddle the Gitrog. And we'll keep line on top. So I can play Baral and then still cast the Winged Words. Since they wouldn't be able to play the Gidrog next turn. Seems fine. And then Witness Protection, an answer to a creature that's in play. And I'll just take six for now. And Shieldred, that's a good one. Probably gonna have to Witness Protection, Shieldred's. And then I don't think I can afford to play Tamiyo here. Might need to Serum Snare the Shakedown Heavy as well. But then I can still Thirst for Discovery, which I could do now. Uh, but maybe I'm better off casting the Eureka Moments. We'll see. So opponent goes to Attackers. I think I gotta take another 6. And then I'll just block... Shieldred, since I can't take uh, one extra damage for free each turn. They might have a way to reanimate it, of course. A Lotus Cobra resolves. And then end of turn, Eureka moments. And then I can still Serum Snare to bounce Shakedown Heavy. And find Shadow of the Second Sun. Yeah, I guess we'll keep up our effects at instant speed. They could try and cast a Virtue. Goes for Shakedown Heavy first. That happens. Unless we want to dig with maybe a Planar Genesis here to find an answer. Eaten by Piranhas, I guess we'll do. And now reanimate Shieldred. Alright, so I guess we'll have to eat Shieldred. Which means I still don't have a solution to the Shakedown Heavy. Probably why they were happy to attack with Shieldred earlier. Okay, no lands for Shadow means maybe time for Uro. Okay, 
This is also a bound spell, but I think I just play it as a land to set up shadow for next turn. Spell Pierce an answer to a virtue of persistence. Bar all triggers, get to draw and discard. And reverse engineer, we're not really close to casting since we only have the one clue token. Although it is nice with shadow once we get to untap to draw more cards. Probably still want Spell Pierce for Virtue, so maybe Thirst goes. And then I'll take six. Can escape Uro to gain more life, and now Reverse Rebuke. Maybe not the best when our opponents can then replay Shieldred. Yeah, maybe for now it is Uro over Shadow. So I can actually um, gain some life back and have a potential blocker for Shakedown Heavy. And I may draw into another counter spell. And if I draw land, I can also play Tamiyo. And then keep instants and sorceries in the graveyard for cards like Snapcaster Mage. Alright, could still Compulsive Research, although I kind of want to draw a land with it, so I'm probably better off keeping up the clue token. Opponent goes to attackers. I mean, I could just take another six. Since we have Uro to maybe recoup some of that life loss. Although we're not too far from escaping it a second time. And now Vorinclex, that one I cannot counter, sadly. So that resolves. I was hoping they would cast Virtue, but they maybe don't have the mana for it. And then next turn they can also redeploy the Gidrog. So a couple problems we need to deal with here. But it's probably time for River Subuke. And then Sanctuary enters untapped, can get back a Tail's End, perhaps. So maybe I actually want to do that now, so I draw the Tail's End. As an answer to Shieldred, among others. Rebuke, bounce everything. And then, let's attack. Draw the Tail's End but they can potentially resolve two scary threats in one turn. Cobra is acceptable. Yeah, they can go Shakedown Heavy plus Shieldred. And have to let the Shakedown resolve since Shieldred kills me much faster. Alright, let's use the Tail's End since Counterspell is a bit more flexible. Trigger Brawl. And I don't mind the extra land. Spell Pierce is losing effectiveness pretty quickly. Still a small chance it can counter Virtue of Persistence. So let's maybe get rid of that one. And we find another answer to a creature. Okay, so yeah, we're sort of doing it now. Uro can attack if they trade for heavy, we're okay with that. So the trade happens. Play Shadow, Enchanting myself. Immediately get to untap, and I could also play Research first. Okay, so counterspells are plenty. Oh, I guess I took a bit of a risk here since I forgot this only triggers at the beginning of the second main phase. So I don't actually get you in tap step. Oh well, um, kind of worked out here. So get an island, and then a glorious gale, or disdainful stroke. I guess we'll go with 
Glorious Gale since Stroke can answer the Virtue of Persistence. Yeah, I'm not quite used to Shadow of the Second Sun yet. A little different than Wilderness Reclamation. But yeah, that's good enough for a concession. Can keep escaping Uro, drawing more cards, gaining more life. And now we can easily keep up counter spells in addition to deploying Tamyo and some of our other creatures. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, playing the Tamyo Mirror Match. And yeah, we've got a answer to Tamyo potentially. And then uh, Winged Words, a way to maybe transform Tamyo. So we'll see if they threaten to get a Planeswalker down early. Opponent passes with two mana up. Okay, in that case we can maybe set up the instant speed play as opposed to tapping out for Winged Words. And uh, take it from there. Now we also have an artifact for Metallic Rebuke. And yeah, for opponent sacks the clue, I'll try this and then uh, hope they don't do the same. Alright, perfect. And then probably one more blue mana. Can attack. Could fight over the winged wards with a spell pierce. Could also just play Signet and then still keep up Metallic Rebuke and Spell Pierce. But the sooner we get to Planeswalker down, the better. So, yeah, maybe Winged Wards protect my Planeswalkers fine. Opponents going for Memory Lapse and uh, Spell Pierce seems fine. That works. Samuel transforms. Opponent stifles the trigger. Alright, that uh, will delay it. And now Winter Moon, yeah. Opponent's got uh, attack against our green splash. So now we only get to untap one land. In addition to our basic. That's a setback. Yeah, I guess uh, Tamio can keep attacking. It's a little risky to tap out for Signet, because if they counter it, then we're fully tapped out. So yeah, just a matter of finding more basic lanes, which, to be fair, our deck has a lot of. Cyclonic Rift also a way to bounce the Winter Moon, so we have options. And this time, Yo's not going anywhere. So this is unlikely to resolve, but let's try. Who's gonna counter? Alright, basic island is good. So, tapping out for Tesseret's Gambit, again, a little bit risky. Think I'm fine going for Arcane Signet, however, since we'll still have Metallic Rebuke backup. Take one. And then could sack a clue here. Let's just untap an extra land. And Mystic Sanctuary still enters tapped at the moment. Now if Eureka Moment resolves, we can also transform Tamio. So that would be good. Although doing it in my turn is a little sketchy. So maybe it is just tapped Sanctuary pass with Eureka Moment available, and uh, that way I keep up a Rewind as well. Urza's command to make Power Stones and draw. That is potentially fine, could also rebuke it just because they can't pay for it right now. Could also go for Eureka Moment, actually, to just transform Tamio, and then I'll still have Metallic Rebuke backup. 
try that. Okay. So Taimyo transforms, even though I don't get to activate the loyalty ability right now. And our opponent once again trying to counter the trigger. Do I fight over this? I mean, I can pretty easily transform Taimyo once again. So I don't think we care. And then the question is, do I counter the Urza's command? Yeah, let's go for it. And then Windswept Heath wants to get basic forest. But I don't have to go for it now. Our opponents bouncing their own Taimyo to free it from this miserable enchantment. So they can finally try to transform their own Taimyo, but they've got a lot of catching up to do. And, uh, yeah, we should be able to transform our own Tamio. Plus I have a witness protection for theirs. Which might be the final straw here. And yeah, our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Alright, we're up against the Nother Nadu deck. And, uh, yeah, this hand could work. Multiple cheap answers. Just gotta hope they don't have an uncounterable effect. Mox Amber's fine. Bonesaw's fine. Okay, so turn one Tamio, turn two, can maybe counter spell or wash away. Hmm. Is there a deeper meaning to this passage? And if they don't play anything, we can start sacking our clue tokens. Consider a cheap 1-mana card draw effect so we can maybe save to more easily transform Taimyo. So, I like my spot, but we'll see. Unctus. Yeah, Unctus is worth answering. I'll just counterspell and then we have Wash Away for Nadu since it would also enable Mox Amber for them. Now with Witness Protection we have a future creature covered as well. So I could deploy the Medallion and then still have Wash Away up. And then I might need to Island Cycle Lorraine Revealed. Our opponents might have the uh, green instant here to make their stuff uncounterable. They don't. Now I'm out of counter spells for Nadu. Witness protection may not happen until after our opponent gets a bunch of value. But I guess, uh, yeah, if they play Nadu next turn, they'll have one mana for Mox Amber to equip Bonesaw. I think it's time to transform Tamio, so we can attack, consider... Maybe sack a clue or cast Contentious Plan, although holding this until after we transform Tamio could be better. And then we're actively looking for a counter spell, which I can maybe still keep up, otherwise, we could even cast Lorian Revealed. So we'll start with the Consider and Compulsive Research. Not quite good enough. Opts, I guess, uh, saves me one mana, so they're less likely to redeploy Nadu if I have two mana untapped. And a Wilderness Reclamation seems good, especially with Lorian Revealed as something to cast in my turn and then untap. Have a Counterspell available, ideally, but we'll see. Okay. And yeah, I guess that's good enough for a concession. Opponent doesn't feel like fighting through Tamio, which, uh, yeah, can pretty quickly reach ultimate, especially now with Contentious Plan as well. We can speed it up by a turn and then uh, take it from there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Punt Lassa. At least this is an Enter the Battlefield ability as opposed to Cascade, which triggers on cast. So, yeah, this hand seems fine. Ideally, they can't take out Tamio right away. And then we can set up turn to metallic rebuke with the clue token. Oh, how am I supposed to focus on only one project? It's 
gonna be paleontologist does let them eventually get back their dinosaurs so that is quite good time you attacks and then can just play a blue source hold the fetch lands for brainstorm purposes marauding raptor that's also gonna resolve I'm gonna keep the rebuke for Pantlaza. Paleontologist attacks, I'll take it. And then could sack the clue here. Um, if next turn I sack a clue and cast Opt, I can transform Tamio. But then we're shields down on countering Pantlaza. So I think it's fine to just sack a clue now. Next turn we'll get another one. And now Wizard's Retort's not bad either. So do I need the extra untapped land? I guess Hedge Maze is fine. And a dig through time I don't mind keeping. Gonna have to discard to hand size here as well. And our opponent with a spear tail. That seems pretty good with the Marauding Raptor on the battlefield especially. And their opponent can pay for Metallic Rebuke, so I have to Wizard's Retort. Next turn we have Rewind available. Although I guess we could have actually cast Dig Through Time if I fetched and then cast Rewind. We would have just enough stuff in the graveyard to also Dig Through Time. A Regisaur Alpha, that's a big one. That one, at least I can Metallic Rebuke. And then maybe tap one artifact so I can still sack the other clue. Now the Paleontologist is still scary since that can just start exiling dinosaurs and eventually replay them. But I want to try to wait on Serum Snare until we transform Tamio in a way. Okay, so I think it's time to transform Tamio with Opt and Consider. That's pretty easy. Although then we're shields down on Rewind, which is probably not acceptable. So I may have to wait anyways. And then we can play Signet, keep up Rewind. Take a few more beatings. But then we're close to maybe turning the corner with a dig through time. Cabaretti Revels, and that's a good one too. All right, let's rewind that one. Since this triggers on cast, so pretty good against counter spells as well. And then I guess we'll uh, dig through time here. I'll look for more answers. Time Warp and Mana Drain are both excellent. I think that's the pick over three steps ahead. Okay, and to Reverse Engineer I can also cast on the cheap. So Time You Attacks makes another clue. Can Reverse Engineer for double blue. And then if I draw an untapped source I can also Time Warp. If I don't, that's going to be a little awkward. So maybe I'm better off going Consider plus Opt, which gives me one extra look at a land with the Surveillance Scry one. 
And then we can still time warp. Our research can go. I right, found the land, so we're in the clear. Transform Tamiyo, still cast Time Warp. And probably don't need more lands. So we'll plus. Take an extra turn. Now we can actually proliferate Tamiyo's loyalty, and yeah, our opponent has seen enough, they don't want to play anymore. Next turn, Reverse Engineer can draw s some more cards, ideally find some creature interaction, but we can also just bounce one of them, and then with all our counter spells, we should have things covered. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Mythweaver. The best answer is a counter spell, and we've got a few, so sign me up. Arboreal Grazer, not as bad as a Halfling would have been. So we will have Counterspell available by the time they can cast Mythweaver, which is what matters. And don't expect early answers to Tamiyo. If you need me, I'll be in the library. So I wouldn't mind hitting an extra land drop, since we have Counterspell, three steps ahead, and then we might want Dismiss as well. Okay, so far so good. So attack, make a clue. Keep up counterspell, and hope they don't have a way to make Mythweaver uncounterable here. They can already try again next turn, so it's important that we have a 3 mana answer which we do. Although if they do play Mythweaver, at least they wouldn't be able to play land afterwards. So I could also maybe bounce it, but I'm happy to keep this as a land drop for Dismiss. Lair of the Hydra could be kind of a threat, we're not the best at answering creature lands. Potentially a reason to play Field of Ruin-like effects in our deck. But uh, as you can see, we do need double blue, triple blue sometimes to cast our spells, so a colorless source can be a bit of a problem. For now, I'll sack a clue. Uh, question is whether I consider as well or keep it as a cheap way to transform Tamiyo. I guess it's reasonable to cast it still. Just want to find more answers. I'll keep an island. And then Lorien Revealed could be a way of transforming Tamiyo as well. So let's go ahead and uh, maybe still play the island since I don't need green. Can maybe use this to get a hatch maze. And then Dismiss can counter Mythweaver. And then we're maybe at a point where we can tap out for a turn without fearing the opponent resolving their commander once again. But they're also at a stage where they can maybe cast some of their 6 plus mana cards. So still a good idea to keep up counters if possible. But this is a pretty clean answer, counter draw card. And that's good enough for a concession, awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Teferi, Temporal, Pilgrim. Our hand seems fine. Tamiyo plus Mox Amber early. Probably fine to play it now. No, no. Next turn back. we can already keep up a counter spell if needed. Although more likely to explore and then keep up spell pierce. And find a Mishra's Bobble, okay. So next turn we can easily transform Tamiyo already. Can bobble myself to decide whether or not to fetch. And Sanctum, not as good as an untapped land would be. So I guess we'll be picky and fetch here. Opponent wants to shut down Tamiyo, we're gonna say no. 
And now the coast is clear to get our planeswalker going. Get a hedge maze. And then brainstorm without a fetch lines, not all that great anymore. So I'll put it in the graveyard. Even though it is a way to draw three, transform Taimyo, and then still keep up three steps ahead, but now negate a much better draw. So first wanna attack. We've already drawn two cards this turn. So could also just sack a clue to transform. But now that we have negate, it should be fine to compulsive research. And then discard a Sanctum. Alright, our hand's pretty stacked. We've got a Planeswalker we can protect. protect and the ultimate is a likely game winning. And that's good enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the combo of Lurus with Amalia. Our hand is reasonable. Um yeah, if they don't answer Taimyo, I can chart a course onto and transform it. And then Subtlety gives us a free answer to a creature. And then we should be able to find another island, so Sanctuary enters untapped. Skralv is acceptable. Take our turn. And then attack. Plus chart a course. Transform Taimyo. And Skralv won't be able to pressure it here. And then I think I'm okay. Pitching something to a subtlety to keep the board clear. Soul Warden, that's fine. That doesn't need to be countered. Since it doesn't uh, attack Taimyo. Okay, so... So far so good. Plus again, and then with Serum Snare we can also proliferate, which means next turn we can already ultimate Taimyo, which is pretty awesome. Charm also a way of stealing a creature, um, but yeah, let's just pass with our counter spells up. Hope they just tap out and give her runes some more protection creatures. That's fine. Anything with one power doesn't threaten Tamiyo. And now a deep cavern bat we can counter in a multitude of ways. But yeah, I guess just metallic rebuke here is fine. Could also let it resolve to be fair, but I would like to serum snare to proliferate. And this attack's not gonna do anything. Opponent's gonna try regardless. But yeah, that doesn't work. Alright, take my turn. Opponent already concedes. They don't even get to see my Serum Snare to proliferate and then ultimate. But with their current board, they don't really have a way to really attack my Tamiyo. So I could just get there over the course of two turns. But yeah, as it turns out, we would have drawn half of our library. And then from there, it's pretty trivial to win the game usually. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we're missing a counter spell for Nadu. Although I guess Disallow could get there since we're on the play. Um, no green mana either, so I think we can do better still. And this is better. And much better. So turn one, let's just fetch a breeding pool right away. Play Taimyo. Could have also kept the shuffle effect until after Brain Surge, but given my current situation, that seems unlikely. Gilded Goose is acceptable. And then now... Can still keep up Wash Away for Nadu. Play Tamped Hedge Maze, and then I can maybe keep the Fetch Land for later. And Witness Protection seems good insurance in case a scary creature can slip through the cracks. So I'm actively hoping they play Nadu here. And they're sort of incentivized to because 
we don't have two mana available. But Wash Away remains a staple in Brawl, and that's good enough for a concession. Alright, so we get to see this Tamiyo deck in action. Didn't actually get to ultimate all that often, since opponents tend to concede before we get to that point, and that's also why I don't need to include too many win conditions in this deck, since the ultimate usually will uh, make the opponent concede on the spot, but if it does get to the point where we actually need to win the game, there's still some random creatures like Uro that are usually good enough to close out the game, so I'm not too worried about having additional win conditions, although you could always play a package like like Seagate Restoration with Thassa's Oracle or with Jace to win the game by having an empty library. So that's also an option if you really want to make sure you have a way to close out the game after ultimating. But for the most part, the ultimate is a win condition in and of itself. And then we've seen popular commanders at the moment like Nadu struggle with a deck like Tamyo since we get to immediately deploy our commander, generate card advantage, and then just hide behind a wall of counter spells. So unless they have a card like Halfling or Cavern of Souls, we can use usually win those games pretty easily. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.